Some Bible scholars see a progression as Jesus evaluates seven successive churches in the book of Revelation. They see the passing of history with each church representing an era of time. If so, we may be in the last era, part of a church Jesus says he will spew out of his mouth. Is your church spiritually hot or, like the one at Laodicea, merely lukewarm? From the Moody Church in Chicago, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Today, Erwin Lutzer continues his eight-part series on what Jesus thinks of his church. Turn to Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, as we visit the church at Laodicea, which could be your church or mine. Now, all of us know that if you have a good doctor who gives you a diagnosis and also a cure, you most assuredly should take that cure. But, of course, if you are self-absorbed, if you are prideful and think that you know better than the doctor, you'll try to figure out ways to ignore what he has to say. You'll disagree with his diagnosis, and you'll also disagree with his cure to your personal hurt. Jesus is the physician of the soul, and he has so much to say to us in his word. And if you take your Bibles today and turn, please, to Revelation chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, where Jesus begins the last of seven letters to the churches of Asia Minor. All of these churches existed in what today is called Turkey. And uh, unfortunately, none of the places exist as churches. Archaeologists, of course, have found all of these places where the cities were, but the churches today do not exist, and that creates a tremendous lesson for all of us. But Jesus here is giving his last word, it's his harshest word, but it is also his most unbelievable word of hope and encouragement that boggles our minds. Chapter 3 of the book of Revelation, he says these words to the church at Laodicea. The words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. Who is it that is going to diagnose our case? Who is it that is going to prescribe the cure? He is the Amen. That word means verily or truly. He is the faithful witness. He's someone who is not going to lie to us. Someone who will not tweak the evidence. And he is the beginning of God's creation. Now there are some people... Some people deny the divinity of Jesus, and they use this text. They say that Jesus was the first of God's creation. But actually, the idea here very clearly is that he is the originator of God's creation. The Father created through the Son. By him were all things created, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, visible and invisible. So Jesus here is represented to us as the originator of God's creation. Now the reason we need to pay attention to this text very carefully is because he is also omniscient. And today he can see right through us and see our need. So with that introduction, let us look at uh, what it is that he has to say to the church. Let us look at the diagnosis. And then let us also look at the cure and the hopeful response that people may have in his blessed presence. First of all, we have the diagnosis in verse 14 and 15. He says, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Ouch. Most of the time, we interpret it this way. We say to ourselves that there were streams that were going into, actually an aqueduct that was going into the town of Laodicea, and uh, the water was piping hot. So we think to ourselves that what Jesus meant is this, I would rather have you hot, passionate for me, or totally icy and indifferent and turned off. I'd rather have you that way than lukewarm. But there's a different interpretation. 
Someone who has done some extensive study archaeologically and in other ways has come to the conclusion that that's not exactly what Jesus had in mind. Actually, in Laodicea, there were two kinds of aqueducts. There was that which came from Hierapolis, and uh, those were very hot springs that people would bathe in, and it was believed that they had many cures. And then there were also some springs that were very cold and refreshing, and you went from one to the other like people do today when they go to a spa. And so Jesus was saying, you can either be hot and passionate, or you can also be refreshing and cool and able to uh, take people in their need and give them and invigorate them. You can be one or the other, but whatever you do, don't be lukewarm. So maybe that's what Jesus had in mind. But lukewarmness, neither hot nor cold, it's tepid. Jesus said that I will spit you out of my mouth. He's talking about the indifference of the people to whom he was writing this letter. Indifference. Does that characterize you today? Now, what is going on here in the text? Jesus goes on to say in his diagnosis, For you say, verse 17, I am rich, I have prospered, I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. In Laodicea, the people were wealthy. And they were wealthy because there were trade routes that went through the city, and so they were quite opulent, the people were, for that day. And they had a lot of things that others didn't have. Furthermore, they had ISAV, this was in connection with one of the temples that was there in Laodicea. They believed that in this medical school that they had ISAB that actually could stop the disintegration of eyesight. So they prided themselves in that. Furthermore, they also, in addition to that, had a textile industry. The people at Laodicea, they dressed differently than the others. They were the ones who wore the designer clothes. And they prided themselves in the cloths and the rugs and the garments that they would make. 